Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're talking air tools versus electric tools. This is episode 106 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. It may come to you as no surprise that I absolutely love buying tools. It's an essential part of my job, and this job allows me to feed a hobby that I'm really into. So today, we're gonna talk air tools and electric tools, pros and cons, and which one is actually better. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, Rain Eater Wiper Blades. Look, wiper blades are one of the easiest DIYs you can do on a vehicle, and it's also one of the most overlooked maintenance things on cars. So if you want an awesome quality wiper blade at a great price, check out Rain Eater Wiper Blades at raineater.com. Rain Eater actually just launched a subscription service for wiper blades, which basically lets you put your wiper blade ordering on cruise control. It's really awesome, check it out. I'll make sure I put a link in the video and the show notes for you guys. So power tools in general, whether they're air or electric, are an essential part of being a professional technician. Now for a DIYer, this stuff is awesome as well. You know, having an electric gun or an impact makes doing most jobs a ton easier. But which one is better, air powered or electric powered? Let's start off talking about air tools. Air tools are kind of the older school way of doing things. They provide more power and usually a faster speed. The speed difference between this impact gun and this impact gun is night and day. The air powered one is considerably faster. It also has more hits per revolution than the electric one does. And if you were to basically compare like pound for pound horsepower, generally air powered impact guns are gonna be cheaper. The RPM difference is considerably noticeable on air ratchets as well. The other great things are these are generally rebuildable. You can get various parts for almost all of these impact guns or air ratchets. They're also considerably lighter. I don't know if you've seen in the intro where I was like struggling to pick this up versus this one is no problem. And I'm right-handed, so this one should be easier to pick up. They also come in a ton of different variants of half inch drive, three eighths drive. You can see these are basically the same. These are both built on Ingersoll Rand frames. This one was labeled a Mac gun, but all the stickers have worn off over the years of use. So there's, there's a lot to love about the air powered guns, but there are some negatives. The biggest, the biggest negative is you're tethered. If you wanna use this, you have to have shop air hooked up to it the entire time. If you're working at a shop with a big like 10 foot long compressor tank, two big compressor motors, it's not a big deal. You have a consistent supply of air. But for me, like at the house, I have a crappy 30 gallon <laughs> air compressor that'll barely, barely, barely keep up with this impact gun. Usually I have to wait till the tank fills. I can take two wheels off with this, then I have to wait for it to fill back up. Also, there's more maintenance. Now that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Generally, people oil their air tools every day, every other day. There's also a little port in most impact guns for you to oil the hammer as well. So some people view that as a good thing. You know, you can take better care of your tools. Some people say, well, that's just one more maintenance step that with an electric tool, I generally don't have to worry about. And again, they're not portable. You're stuck at a location that has shop air in order for these guns to be any good. Now, when we look at electric power tools, the opposite is true. Now, for the most part, I'm talking about battery operated tools. I know there's a lot of plug-in tools which have a lot of the restrictions that the air power tools do, but right now I'm basically talking about battery operated stuff. Things like this impact gun, this smaller impact gun, this electric ratchet. So these are highly portable. You can take this anywhere. You can throw it in your car. You know, if you're going to the junkyard, you can t bring it with you to take parts off cars. It's great for changing tires on the roadside so you don't have to screw around with the, uh, the manufacturer supplied tooling. The go anywhere option of these is really one of the greatest features of having battery powered stuff. Also, you get different options for things like lighting. You can see this impact has a really bright LED on it. I actually think this one does and even the electric ratchet does as well. You also have options for considerably smaller tools like this one right here, which is great for me anyway. I use this for interior work because I can turn down the torque and use it for small dash screws, something that I actually can't do on either one of these two or really anything air powered. Some air powered do have a, a setting where you can turn it down. This one you can turn it down, but it also reduces the speed of rotation of the head as well, 
whereas the electric ones generally don't do that. And battery life is getting considerably better than it was 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, you would have to charge your battery on something like this every day, every two days. Now I think I go a week to a week and a half, even when I was full time on the line before having to replace a battery in, in my Makita. And this is probably the tool that I use the most out of all the tools that I own. Even this, this has sat for probably six months without me using it and it's still, it's still going. It's still got basically a full charge on the battery. So it's cool that, you know, a lot of these also now have indicators as well so you can tell exactly how much charge the batteries do have. But the drawback to these really nice battery powered tools is they're generally expensive. They're generally more expensive than their air powered counterpart. This one I think came in over $300. This was right at 200 bucks. I got it on sale for like $120. This one was a little bit more expensive because it was labeled Mac. I bought it on eBay, so I got a really good deal on it. But if you buy these on the tool truck, you're gonna pay top dollar. But the same goes for the electric powered tools as well. If you're buying them on the tool truck, they're gonna be ultra expensive. This one is actually from Lowe's. I did a review on it. I'll put a link in the show notes. You're also gonna need a way to charge the battery. So at some point at using this, you're going to need access to a power source. It's obviously not unlimited, unlimited power, despite the fact that we are almost at back to the future date. We, uh, we don't have unlimited power sources just yet, so you are gonna need a place to charge the battery. The good thing is, is most of this kind of stuff does come with a battery and a charger as well, depending on what you're buying. I think I kind of mentioned it on the air power tool. These things are heavy. This thing weighs a ton. This thing probably weighs twice what this gun does. And you know, for a DIYer and a, a casual user of this kind of stuff, that's not a problem. I will tell you though, using them throughout the day, because I really tried hard to use this throughout the day in the shop, it gets heavy very fast. And I actually did switch back to my air powered impact gun because it was so much lighter and so much easier to use. Now these are composite, which makes them considerably lighter than say a full steel bodied impact gun, which I think this is pretty much the style that most everybody uses. But carrying around something this heavy and using it all day does become quite taxing. So that begs the question, who wins? What's better? Air powered or electric? Well, it may come as a surprise to you that neither one is actually better than the other. They both have their place in the world and really shine in different areas. For me, when I'm at the shop, where I have an unlimited supply of shop air, I almost always go for my air powered impact gun or my air powered 3 8 or really even my air powered ratchet because it is quite a bit smaller in size than my electric one. I have a little swivel on the end of it, which makes it even smaller and, and a little bit more agile. But here at the house or when, let's say I needed to go out to the lot to do something, I grab my electric tools pretty much every time. The ability to not be tethered to anything is incredible. It's where this stuff really shines. And honestly, nowadays, if you're a DIYer or doing stuff at the house, I don't really see any need to buy air powered tools. I think these do such a good job. The batteries are so much better. The tool pricing isn't so different that I would recommend buying air tools and a compressor instead of just buying the electric tool equivalent. So at home, this is what I use. At the shop, this is what I use. Again, it really all comes down to, do you have a constant supply of shop air for this stuff or are you better off with battery powered stuff? So the big question of the day, what do you prefer, air powered, or electric. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can also watch more of my tour reviews. I've reviewed this, I've reviewed these, I mentioned this a number of times. It was in my top five favorite tools video. I'll put links to all that stuff in the show notes. You can also check out the playlist tool and product review. It'll tell you more about this kind of stuff as well. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Uh, no beer of the day, another day of coffee of the day. This is, uh, I don't know, some coffee my wife bought, a little vanilla syrup, just a touch of milk, and like you guys know, I like my coffee iced.